Hello, I'm Andy Tatsall and I'm an information specialist based at the School of Health and Related Research at the University of Sheffield. In this very short series of podcasts, I'm going to hopefully give you a few tips on how to deal with that modern day problem of digital distraction, information overload and help you write a bit more. In the academic world, it's very easy to get distracted by a multitude of things, and this can be from your mobile phone to interruptions by other people. And social media and email also can create that constant stream of content that can take you away from your writing work. These are all part of a modern academic environment, but when you really need to write that paper or prepare those slides or finish that thesis chapter, then it can become quite problematic. So over the course of the next few very short podcasts, um, I'm going to try and help you and give you a few ideas and tools and techniques to cut out that noise and distraction. I'll also help you focus on getting stuff done with a few helpful tips to help you write more productively. This series of podcasts does come with a disclaimer that there is no one size fits all or there's no single fix to information overload and distraction, especially the digital kind. It does require you to employ a certain degree of willpower and like any changes in your lifestyle and working practices, you do need to put some effort in. But if you do that, I will guarantee you'll see positive results. So in this very first podcast, I want to give you a few tips on note taking. Um, Those who note take do find it a useful exercise, only if it's to reinforce ideas by the simple process of writing them down. However, it does help a lot of students and academics revisit lectures, seminars, conferences, and they can refer to them afterwards. In traditional note-taking, if that works well for you, then that's great. But there's a few things you could try and do to improve on it. Firstly, if you're a traditional book and pen note-taker, then you could try the Cornell note-taking system. And this simply works by dividing your page into four squares. At the top, you have the title and the date whilst you draw a line down about a quarter of the way uh, up from from the bottom of the page. So you draw a line across the bottom about a quarter of the way up and that will be a summary of the notes of that page. On the left hand side you'll draw a line between your title and summary sections and that will be about a third of the way in. So you should have four sections, a top, a bottom and then the middle is split one third in from the left. On the right hand side that is where you write all the main body and the the actual kind of content of your page and that will be your notes and your key thoughts. Um, If possible use abbreviations and then on the left hand side this is where you will write corresponding keywords and questions in relation to the main body of your text. If you're more technology focused then there's plenty of tools out there that you can use to take notes. Evernote is a brilliant tool for capturing notes in addition to recording audio such as a lecture. Uh, But that said it's essential that you do ask the permission of the person speaking before you record them. In Evernote you can take web clippings, you can store photos, you can store PDFs and other kinds of artifacts and it's essential If you are going to use Evernote and you're going to use the free version, which uh, an awful lot of people do, that you decide which two devices you're going to use Evernote with because that's what you're limited to with a free version. It's worth paying more if you want to. If you're a big user of of something like that, then it's worth paying for. But if you're going to just use it um, lightly, then I suggest you really think about what you do use it on. Do you use it on your, your desktop and, say, your home computer, or do you use it on your tablet and use it on your laptop, etc.? So there's things to consider. If you want to get more out of the software, then you say you've got to pay for the premium version. There's also really other good useful note-taking tools out there, and a couple of the better ones are Good Notes, which is uh, on for Apple devices, and Lecture Notes, which is all kind of one compound word for Android users. If you're more of a post-it note kind of person, then I suggest you look at Padlet. Padlet has been around for quite a long time. It works really well, and it is a great way to kind of share notes and ideas as well. Um, Obviously, um, got to think about the the fine line between collaboration and collusion, but it is a good thing for kind of group work and note-taking. And then there's Google Keep, which is excellent for keeping short notes and web links. So... Hopefully this first little podcast, very short, the series is a very short series of podcasts, little kind of helpers along the line will help you. Um, My name is Andy Tattersall and you can find more about um, me and and these podcasts through the web links that's attached to the image on the uh, 
podcast that you're listening to. So thanks a lot for listening and hope you found that useful.